Crossroads Media. Happy 4th of July, everybody. If you hear my dogs bark, I apologize. They're not having a lot of fun due to these fireworks tonight, okay? (laughs) So we got to live with it. Speaking of fireworks, the Phillies played with none this afternoon in Wrigley. It sucks. They got abused pretty good, 10-2. to You won the series, though. Couldn't get the sweep. Winning two, though, especially away from CBP, matters to me. Shorthanded. The Braves drop the series to the Giants. You're going to Atlanta next. It was important to win at least a minimum of two in Chicago. You win with Mercado. Game one, which sets up a potential series win with Zach Wheeler. And believe it or not, when the game gets tied 3-3, Sosa, Whit Merrifield has the response. Bang, bang, a power punch. Take the lead instantly back in the eighth. Shut the door and take the series as you wipe your hands clean. Game three got ugly. I did not think it was even possible for Christopher Sanchez to struggle that much. Seven earned runs in four innings. Ew, that's bad. That's a bad ew. I'll give you a good ew. The way he managed to get out of the second, he allows a man on first. He allows a man on second. No outs. Oh, geez, this is going to be a disaster, huh? No! Three straight strikeouts swinging. Ew! That's a good ew. And when you play with fire, as much as Sanchez was playing with fire, the fourth inning starts off the same exact way. I don't know how many times you will escape. I like that you have the balls and the ability to. But I don't know if you can ask to. Too many times. That made sense in my head. Did I draw that out a little too long? Possibly. Christopher Sanchez has allowed more earned runs so far in July than he did all of June. You're talking six earned runs in the month of June total. So bad day for the numbers. And this is right after he gets awarded an accolade screaming you're the best National League pitcher in the month. Which is a fucking awesome think for him to receive to hear what the clubhouse was like the moment it was announced to the to the phallus it should send goosebumps down your spine because you know that the way they are a family is like nothing ever and when it has that feel it means you're destined to do great things How many All-Stars do we have? 72? You want to listen to Alec Boehm talk about his All-Star not? Well, okay, here you go. Yeah, I mean, I don't really really know. It's all kind of like, I really know yet, you know? But, no, I mean, it was was really cool. It's obviously, you know, one of those things that kind of just makes you think about all the, you know, the time and... All the games we played, all the, the good ones, the bad ones, and, you know, all that stuff, and kind of makes it all worth it. Good times, bad times, all that. I mean, you play baseball long enough, you know, it's it's not always going to be pretty. And, uh, but a lot of those, you know, failures and all that stuff is teaching moments too, you know, and, you know, little ways to, you know, make yourself better in the long run. So I think, you know, all of it's kind of happened exactly how it should. And, kind of brought me to where I am today. All right, so you might hear that and think, Broads, in what world did you want that dull-ass comment, those 50 seconds that I will never get back listening to such a blah version of Alec Boehm, why did you put me through that? And here's my answer. That was authentic. That was raw. 
That was Alec Bohm seriously reflecting and giving you his thoughts on being an all-star. And it's not this crazy level of, wow! I'm sure there's a part of that in him. But to see his story, to see his ups and downs, to see the I fucking hate this place moment, and now where he is today, an all-star caliber third baseman? There was some serious self-assessment happening within those 50 seconds, and it's well-deserved. So I'm giving him the love and allowing for him to express himself in a in a very open way. And you deserve to hear that. Now, let's take a listen to the NBC Sports pregame show. This is Ben Davis and Michael Barkan. The All-Star Reserves and pitchers will be announced Sunday. Plenty of deserving Phillies pitchers. Ranger Suarez, Zach Wheeler pitching tonight. Christopher Sanchez, pitcher of the month. Jeff Hoffman, Matt Strom, could, uh, Kyle Schwarber could be a reserve. Which other Phillies do you think will make the cut, Ben, when it's said and done? That's a tough one, Michael B. I, I think tonight's start for Zach Wheeler has a big say on what happens to him going into the All-Star break. But I would say locks for me would be Suarez and Sanchez, obviously two and three in the, in the National League and ERA. And then you're going to go with Jeff Hoffman. I think I, Matt Strom, has, I think he deserved it, but last couple outings have been rough for him. But I looking at Jeff Hoffman, this guy's thrown 36 in the third innings. He's got 46 strikeouts and just a 1.24 ERA. So I think that's very deserving. Now, that being said, it's very hard to make the all-star team as a middle reliever guy. But I think if, if, if Hoffman gets a nod, I think Matt Strom is also very well deserving. But I just think Hoffman just a little bit better at this point. All right, so there you go. Take it for what it is. There's some commentary on the current all-star situation with your fight and some other takeaways. I guess let me finish off some Sanchez notes. That was the second home run he has allowed all season. Now, I'm not trying to throw shots at Nola. As you know, I'm a Nola guy. But I feel Aaron Nola averages allowing two home runs a game. A game. I see two balls fly out of the park. I mean, really? It's been two all season? That was almost a smack in the face. Didn't mean to catch any strays there, Nola, I'm sure. But I apologize. That's what I thought of. Um, the last home run he allowed was in April. Did I say that? The last time he allowed three walks in one game was May. It's freaking July 4th. So he's been locked in on a mission, and I expect a pretty big bounce back. Am I worried that there's a blueprint? No, because as long as Sanchez executes and doesn't throw maybe a 3-1 pitch over the heart of the plate, or if Ian Happ isn't there, <laughs> I mean, dude, four for four, six runs batted in, what? Two home runs, a single, and a double. What? What? And he hit a home run from both sides of the plate. What? Imagine playing Major League Baseball and hitting a home run normal. I'm a right-handed batter. I would like to think I was Bryce Harper growing up. Full disclosure, I was Garrett Stubbs. So I was stubby. Vibe guy, nine-hole hitter, could defend at the catcher position. Not too much pop. So, to think that there are ways to hit a long ball in the same game twice, lefty and righty. What? It's hard to do it your strong way. And don't tell me these people can do but I, 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 I don't believe it. One's got to be easier than the other. So Rob Postgame mentioned that Christopher Sanchez was probably fatigued from the complete game shutty that he had, and that's fair. He only threw 101 pitches, though. It wasn't as if it was 115, 116, and very toxic on the body and taxing on him. I don't think that that's the case. Uh, he mentioned then, and this one made me chuckle, I did a side eye, seriously. This is going to be enough for Sanchez to blow up his next start or not. That getting up and down nine times is grueling, bro. What? Seriously. He just didn't have it today. I'd rather Rob say he didn't have it today. 
They were apparently looking at his pitch count and making sure that it doesn't rise to a certain level because of the complete game shutty. Do 101. You can have guys throw 101 through 7. And if he threw 101 through 7, you wouldn't look at it as a full body of work, a full game, a full 9. But it's the same amount of pitches. If he threw over 110, or maybe just under 110, maybe. But almost being at 100 on the dot, you were going to go in with an approach of he might get yanked around 80 anyway? Uh, I don't know. I just didn't love that. But Sanchez is a dog, and I expect big things. Here's another takeaway from the series. Trey Turner looks to be back with his legs. How many times have we seen him running the bases and wonder if he is going 60% or 70%? Is he going 75%? It's definitely not full. It's definitely not a hundo. He stole second base, and this is what sucks about game three. You had an early lead. Trey gets on, steals second. Not for one second did I think he wasn't giving it his all. And then Brandon Marsh delivers for an RBI knock. And then in the fourth, Nick Castellanos with a solo shot. So you're up 2-0. You had the lead. It looked like you could be in control. I actually knew a couple people who took the trip to Chicago, went to the game today. I went, oh, geez, this is the one game you went to. Afternoon game in Wrigley. In theory, it sounds like a nice bucket list to knock off, and it is. But when people say, oh, yeah, did you ever make a trip to Wrigley? He's like, yeah, I did. I went to an afternoon game. They go, oh, that's great. Do you add the context that it was a 10-2 bend him over? Nick Castellanos has the biggest ball sack ever. Whoops, that was the wrong one. Bend him over! That's what happened. So they say, oh, how'd the game go? And he went, well, I think the Phillies said this prior to the first pitch. Bend him over! No, that made no sense. Uh, hey, how did that game go? Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I asked the, um, the the Cubs how it went, and they said this. We bend him over! I don't know, dude. I don't know. I suck. I suck. I suck. Hard to be mad at the lineup for losing 10-2 while the back end didn't do anything pretty. Clemens, one hit. Dahl, no hits. Rojas, no hits. Stubbs, no hits. It was out of reach for a while. Sir Anthony didn't help. Gregory Soto actually had a rougher one, which I believe breaks his streak that he was on through seven, eight outings-ish. But the game was so far out of touch that maybe this is a good thing. Because if you do well for so many outings in a row, you're inevitably going to have one of those bad ones. And that bad one could have happened in a 3-2 game in the eighth inning. Instead, it happens when you're already down six, seven runs. So you got it out of the way. You got your out-of-jail-free card. Because the moment wasn't bigger. And there wasn't more intensity involved in the moment. Maybe. Maybe. I'm trying to be patient, though, with Kyle, Bryce, and JT out. We did learn something else. Marshawn has some pop. My God, does Marshawn have some pop. Both backup catchers had a nice splash offensively in this series. Garrett Stubbs, game one, two RBI double to set the scoring nice and early for the Phils. That was what? Was that Tuesday? Did they have off Monday? They had off Monday. They started this Tuesday, and it was an 8 o'clock game. Yes, two 8 o'clock games in a row, and then the afternoon tilt on 4th of July. So Tuesday's game, if you remember, Garrett Stubbs with an impact. Then Marshawn with an impact. And somebody actually called into the radio and asked me today who I would prefer moving forward with as the backup catcher in the playoffs to JT Real Muto. And uh, it's obvious based off of the Rob Thompson ways. He's not going to disrespect Stubbs like that. Should he disrespect Stubbs like that? It's a different question. And no, I think the answer still is Stubbs over Marshawn. Marshawn's intriguing. And Marshawn has made the most of his opportunities here. And I think he's made it difficult for the manager to decide what he wants to do because both have been playing well. And that's definitely noted. Continuity with Stubbs with this pitching staff if you were ever in an extreme or ever in a nightmare where Garrett Stubbs needed to be utilized in a playoff game, 
I like the continuity that Stubbs has had with this crew, let alone the vibe guy, the teammate, the grind that he's been with this team for many years now. That's the bond and relationship that Rob Thompson value, values and uh, will, without a doubt, go with Stubbs moving forward. Just, it was just a hypothetical, if you had to move on from one, it was really displaying maybe what Marshawn has done and his home run power is serious. He's got some pop. He's got some pop. They're both playing well. It's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. But I don't know if it's realistic to pin these two together. You know? I also got this. I also got... And I can't believe we're here. We got to put Bryson Stott at the top when Kyle Schwarber gets back. Shut up! Shut up! No! I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to get into it. Thought the Phillies fans traveled very well. It seemed every time they shot the cameras over to the fans, over to people in the stadium, red, red, red out the ass. A lot of Phillies fans, a lot of Phillies fans cheering over the weekend. So it was cool to see them represent. Speaking of representing, I forgot to play Rob Thompson's audio of what Alec Bohm representing the Phillies is all about and how it went down. It was pretty neat because he was on the train until he was just getting rubbed out and, and um, he put, got a big smile on his face. Oh! Oh! What? What'd you say, Rob? He was on the train until he was just getting rubbed out and, and um, he put, got a big smile on his face. Huh. Okay. Let's go to the anytime outline. Let's take a call. I'm not going to keep this one long because my eye is on the price. My eye is fully on Phillies. Braves. Had a brain fart. Phillies in Truist Park. I hate them. Finally a series with this extra hate in my blood. I feel it's been a while since I had this. So as much as I appreciate the series win in Chicago, it's a quick turn the page. I'd probably harp on this loss more if it was a series against, I don't know, Pittsburgh coming up or the Oakland series. The fact that it's Atlanta. What do you want me to do? Sit in this filth for a while? No, no, no. The game sucked. July 4th, blown out, miserable time. Atlanta, fuck you. That's how I feel right now. So we'll take one and then we'll wrap it up. Well, we did win two or three. But I tell you this much. This team Mm -hmm. is smart as hell. I'll tell you this much. Don't be surprised if they take, what, what is it, uh, two or four. They don't want the whole goddamn sweep. They don't want it. What? Win the series, and then the last game, fuck it. That's that's what they want. How many times does the goddamn Cubs win? Uh, win two to ten. I, I mean, I'm not gonna sit there and say that it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. But I'm telling you that they're smart as hell. The Eagles did the same thing when they won the championship. What? Hey, the Rams. If we lose, we lose. Hey, everybody else. Falcons. We lose, we lose. But. If we get there, if we win it all, huh? I'm going to give you my A game. That's what it is, bro. We, we've lost a lot of people. I ain't worried about it. And this is coming from somebody who is a hard ass on the, uh, on the Philly. Yeah. We'd be all right. Good, good series win. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know where to go from here. Thank you guys all so much. I love you guys to death. Big series in Atlanta. And we'll see what happens. Thank you all so much. Catch you on the next one.